Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, I hear myself. Good morning. Good morning. You guys are being too friendly. A little bit. When I'm trying to talk, yes. All right, good morning, everybody. Get this turned off, get this set up. Okay. Well, Benjamin's going to try to join us today. We'll see how that goes. He looks a little sleepy, so we might make it. All right, guys. Um, still trying this set up. I like it. It's working. Now that we don't have the TV, this is great. So uh, we did, we printed off some more slides. So what I want to say about that is um, a few things. One is the slides are just there as a visual aid, okay? I'm going through the slides up there. What was handed out to you is what we've gone through in the past already, okay? And I did add a few of what we're going to do today. But we've gone through those in the past. I kind of give those as just, I know you guys have kind of been asking for them and, and you like them. Um, but what I try to like stay away from and I used to notice this in the past when I did a lot of PowerPoints, and this is why I'm always shy a little bit of giving out PowerPoint stuff with it, is because you'll focus on what I handed out, and then we'll get distracted and forget, like, remember, I'm going to be built, what, I ha what you have is the finished product, okay? But as I go through, we're talking, and we're kind of building this as we go, right? Just as if I handed you this chart, and said, okay, well, this is what the Bible is about, and you just take this and let me know if you have any questions, it wouldn't make any sense, right? But if we go through this together and we build it together, then, then you're going to understand it, right? So I just say that as a caution, as, you know, what I'm handing out to you is not like you could just hand that to somebody and they could just understand, Right? As well as, when we're going through this today, remember, I'm gonna, we're going to use this up here. You're going to have a copy of it for afterwards. Feel free to write notes on the back of it as we go and follow along. But don't feel like you need to like go to the last slide and, and read through it and, and have all the understanding already. Okay? Does that make kind of sense? Okay, so we're going to start on the slide that looks like this on there if you want to follow along. Um, I didn't staple them together because I know there was a paper clip that was with before. Uh, and we can get you more paper clips if you want to. But this is where we're going to start. Sound good? So I'll let you get there. I'm going to have a drink of coffee. And then I'll be all ready to go. <laughs> For all the rabbit trails and stuff that I can get lost on that doesn't follow the PowerPoint anyway. Okay. But remember, this is a visual aid. This isn't like going to teach you everything, okay? This is just. So are we starting now? Yeah, we're going to start right here on this slide. Yeah, there's a big yellow one that looks just like this one. And feel free to write notes. Like, that's the best thing about you guys having the paper version is take notes for yourself if you want to study something later on your own, if you want to understand something, you know, whatever you can come up with. But. This is just how my brain works. My goal is that you can take this, study it on your own, and uh, build your own thing, right? You can probably take this and make it a hundred times better than I can, okay? All right, that's, that's where we're at. All right, so all those pages before the one that you're on right now are ones that we've, gone, we've already gone through in the past. Does that make sense? That's what we've already done. Yeah, that's covered in the past. So you kind of have the whole PowerPoint. That's where we're caught up. All right? OK. Because I know I didn't have handouts for the past few ones. So what I want to do today is I want us to start out, turn to Galatians 3. We're going to read Galatians 3 together, because I think it really uh, pertains to what we're talking to today. And then uh, we'll probably come back to it here and there, but I want to kind of use it as the jumping off point 
and we're going we're gonna to dive into a little bit of the law and, and close in that, uh, that section up. Last time we talked about what the law is and where it fits, and we're just going to kind of continue that and really go into but now. Okay? So Galatians 3, let's read it together, um, and then we'll pray. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently seen, set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain... Oh, that's not a question, even though I ended it like a question. Sorry. He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye, therefore, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which are be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ." And I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of the transgressions, Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been given by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Dear Lord, um, I just thank you for, for these scriptures that explain to you us what you are doing and what you aren't doing and so that we know what's going on and that we uh, have your, your plan and uh, we can understand what your righteousness and how it's being attained today and uh, we just thank you for all those things. I thank you for the men and women who are here today that uh, love your word and in all these things, amen. 
Okay, so last time we, we, we went and looked at the law and what it is and what it isn't a little bit, right? And I just kind of like primed the, the engine so that we could go into contrasting that with but now, okay? And we looked at what the law can do and it can't do. We're going to do a little bit more of that today with developing with some verses. And you see that the law is always associated with what? Your, your flesh, right? Um, you can see kind of here uh, verse 2 of that chapter 3. This only, what I learn of you, received ye the spirit of, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the what? The flesh. Are, you, are the deeds of your flesh what's going to justify you? Right? No. But, we look, so we looked at that the law, which is that, you know, those pictorial form is apparently uh, two little tablets off of a weird looking mountain, um, can only manifest sin in your life. Right? But that doesn't, mean, and 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 that in the, it teaches you that that's what sin can do. But it's still it is righteousness in and of itself, right? But you being in the in in the flesh and in Adam and who we are with our sin nature, that old sin nature, what can we not do? We can't keep it, right? Okay, but it's still righteousness being made known. Okay. Um, and we looked at how faith is just purely having faith in that, believing in that cross, right? And we're going we're gonna to kind of develop that today. And that's how we get justification. And it's just by believing. There's no works there. And you're not asked to do anything, okay? Now, we can kind of go into the next thing here, which is uh, turn over to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 3. Verse 19. Romans 3, 19. Now we there, up until this point, the context, what has Paul been doing? Proving everyone guilty, right? And he's summarizing it here um, in Romans 3, these verses here, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every, verse 19, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be what? Justified in his sight, for the law is what? The knowledge of sin, right? It manifests the sin in your life. Okay, so the law is the righteousness of God as a standard. Um, the law only manifests sin, right? Instead of giving righteousness to man. Um, it's standard that no man with that old sin nature of Adam could attain. And what do you need to keep doing in the law? You keep bringing the sacrifice. Built into the law is that you keep bringing the sacrifice. Okay? And we're going to kind of develop that as we go today. And the animal sacrifice is only, you know, atoned for you that year that you had to keep bringing back. There was other things you had to do um, until Christ came. But, but I want to keep, I want to, I'm going to say this a million times. And mostly because when you talk to people too, and I know we understand this, but it's still something you have to put in your brain and you can easily do, um, is that when you read this verse 21 in here, and it says, but now, people before this didn't understand the cross and what's going on, okay? And that's why it's so important to contrast this. We understand it so that when you go back and you read this stuff, you can't, they didn't know what was coming. They didn't know how this was going to happen. That's why this is so important. One of the aspects of this is that we didn't under, they didn't understand what we do today, okay? And then when we contrast this stuff, we're able to see how important it is that we have this special message, right? We kind of just, I don't want to say that we all do it, but it's easy to kind of just take it for granted and, and the revelation that we have, 
okay? And this but now is crazy compared to what it was in the past. Whew, man, air conditioning is the real deal. Um, so we need to, we're, and that's why I'm spending kind of like two messages on this, and you can really spend forever on this, but um, we'll see what we can get to today with that, okay? And then when you get to Romans 3, 21 through 26, we see, well, now we know how we can attain righteousness. We have that as a possession, right? We're not waiting for that. Okay, the law has been manifesting your sin. We didn't know how he was going to make it right until now. And this is not necessarily God's righteousness being made known, right? Because the law has been there. It is a righteous standard. But now we know how we can attain that righteousness. Now we understand how God's making that happen. Okay, it's an important thing to kind of, you know, mull around in our, well, maybe I should say it for myself, my stupid head, right? Right? It's a good thing to think about. Okay? Um, so I, I, I want you to see a few things, okay? Because the law while it only pointed to your sin, their faith was asked to do it. And there's a difference, in the, and you can see that happening today, okay, is that people look at it as, I'm going to do it so that I can become righteousness. And that's different than saying, God said, do this. I believe God. He said, if I do this thing, I'll be righteous. So they have faith, and then they go do the action. Okay, so I want you to grab... I want you to grab Luke 1, and I had, uh, I had a friend show me this, and it's a great contrast. So I want you to grab Luke 1, and I want you to grab Philippians 3, okay? Because it's important to understand what the law could and couldn't do, and when you read it, what's really happening, okay? So I want you to, I want to read uh, Luke 1. We'll start in verse 5. We're just going to compare these things, okay? Luke 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacchaeus, of course, of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Okay? All right, now I want you to read. Now, uh, hopefully you have Philippians 3 already. Let's read in verse 4. And Paul here is talking about, hey, if there's anyone who can say that it did something in the flesh, it's me. All right, if you think you have something more over the flesh, well, hey, look at it, it's me more. Look at verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh... If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, what? I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But then you keep reading, and what does he say? But what things were gained to me, those I counted for loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. I mean, think about that, right? So here's, here's Paul. What is he trying to do? See, he's got it backwards. He's saying, okay, well, the law, the deeds of the law, the actions of the law... I'm going to take those to God and say, look at how cool and awesome and how much I can do before you, God, right? He's trying to attain righteousness himself, right? But over in, over in Luke 1, it says, you know, at face value, it kind of says the same thing, right? It's, it's, it, the, this is why it's important to understand how amazing the but now is, Okay? And they were both righteous before God. What? What is that little thing right there? Comma. Right? Walking in the commandments of the ordinances of the Lord and blameless. 
So see, they started out with faith first. They were righteous before God because they had faith. Their faith then asked them to do what? Walk. And that's what they did. And But they did it by faith. Whereas Paul over here is doing it the opposite. Right? We see this in religion today. It's like one of the one of the things that we we battle, and many Christians battle, is uh, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna do these deeds, Lord. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna do these, you know, it's I hate picking on certain things, but the easiest one is the Catholic religion, right? Is is hey, I'm gonna do these sacraments, these things that were given to us by God or by man or whatever they think, right? And, and I, I don't, I say it to call it out because it's not, it's not biblical, okay? But what are they doing? They're saying, I'm going to be this perfect thing before you, God. Now, if you have a conversation with, you know, a pretty uh, stout Catholic, you know, they're going to argue that very differently than I just did. But when you boil it down, that's exactly what it is, Okay. When you boil it down, it's exactly what it is. It is that they want to prove that they are worthy of that gift. To the point that I don't know why they call it a gift. Okay? So, that's the difference here. Okay? And I want to go through some verses to kind of show the progression. I want to kind of take a step back and let's just prove out what I just said through that. Okay? Um, Let's go over to Deuteronomy 6.25. Deuteronomy 6.25. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. We'll probably read 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes... To fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our what? Righteousness. See, the law was what Israel had as their righteousness from God. That's why when it says in Romans that, but now the righteousness is being made known without the law, is that's a crazy thing to say. That's why people looked at, you know, that's why, well, yeah. Okay, so this is their righteousness. But it's, 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 it's what they have faith in God, just like Noah. Noah said this, God, Noah, God said it to Noah, Noah believed it, and therefore he did it, right? He didn't go build the boat and say, hey, God, look, I got this boat here, and uh, look how righteous I am, right? It was the opposite, right? But this is their righteousness. It's their, it's their walk, and it taught them, we looked in the past, when we were building the chart on the other slides, that it is their, it's their righteousness to the entire world. It's the showing God off through the world. Everything in those laws is the opposite of how the Gentiles worked. Right? Those, I mean, some of the, go read some of the laws. They're the opposite of how Gentiles work. It's what they do. Right? It's crazy to think. And here in the U.S., you know, at least... We've had some of those morals built into the fabric of our country, and we kind of don't realize what we have, okay? But the Gentiles are not, um, have not, oh, they don't, they would look at a Jew and say, wow, everything they do is the opposite of what we would do, okay? That's because they have the righteousness of God shown to them, that they're supposed to walk by them. But what we're, what we're finding out is like, that didn't, that didn't save them. Right? It's just that they listened to God. God said, do it. Therefore, they did it. Okay? You couldn't be a believing Jew and not do the law. Because if God said, do it, I'm going to do it. Doesn't mean he did it perfectly, as we all know. Right? Okay. I've, I've kind of beat that to a... Okay, so. Um, it could never give you righteousness, but it could show you the righteousness that you could never live up to. Now, I want you to grab Hebrews 10. Okay, other side. Keep all the way over. The law had built into it a system that would show you that you were a sinner. Okay? You got Hebrews 10? Verse 1. Oh, 
here comes AC again. Here we go. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, right? Have you ever seen, I think I brought this up before, have you ever seen the puppets that people do with their hands, the hand puppets? It's amazing what people can do. I always look at those videos and I just, I'm like, it looks exactly like a puppy. Like everyone can do this, you know, haha, or this. But like some of these puppy things that they do, or, or what, go watch some videos on YouTube. It's worth watching. It's amazing. But that's just a shadow, right? You've got you've to do everything else in that image to really picture the puppy. Because at the end of the day, it's just the outline, right? For the law having the shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Okay? We now know that the law never wasn't the thing that made them perfect. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Why did they keep bringing the sacrifice? See, if the law could have done it, they would have just done that once and been good. But no, right? Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. See, the, they should have had their sins wiped out. They wouldn't have needed it anymore. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every what? Year. Year. They, the, the law had a system built into it that showed them you, you don't have, you, you're, not, you're not meeting the standard, right? Verse 4, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. And you keep reading there, and you see how, uh, verse 8 above, when he sa- said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin that wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the, the what? The law. Okay? So the reason the law could not save you is it never had a payment for the one you broke. Okay? And we're going we're gonna to keep developing that. Bulls and boats couldn't save you. Only faith in what God says is true and what you're relying on is. Remember when we looked at uh, Psalms 4.1? And what does David say in Psalms 4.1? Remember reading that? That's okay. That's okay. So go, go over to Psalms 4.1. It's a, this is like, I like this verse because it just kind of sums it up real quick. What, is, what does David know? Psalms 4.1. Hear me when I call, O God of my what? Where does he know righteousness comes from? God. Right? All right, I want you to, I want you to grab. Paul also talks about the shadow of what the law is. Okay, we only understand this now that we're on what side of the cross. See, these are things you guys can talk about depending on who, you know, who you are talking about and where they're coming from in their background um, to, to show people out of God's word, not just because, you know, we're special or anything, right? How many years did it take me to really realize what's in here? Um, like, I know I'm not special, but now that we have it, we can have confidence in this to teach people right? And it takes a little bit of practice. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, actually, to, to, to understand where these things are, okay? But Paul also talks about these shadows, right? If you go do a study sometime, go to, as I'm saying this, go to Colossians uh, 2 and Ephesians 2. Um, go look at how many times Paul says the word confidence. It's amazing how many, I mean, if you you look through that and you just see you won't be depressed at least for that day that you do that study. All right. Uh, Ephesians 2, what I say? Colossians 2, right? Yeah. <clears throat> we'll read Colossians 2 first. Verse 14. Um... Let's read from verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein ye are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and, un- and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All right. Kind of different than 
uh, the law where you're bringing it all the time, right? Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So it's out of the way, right? Um, uh, keep reading. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of new moon or of the Sabbath days. What's 17 say? Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay, Paul's also talking about this. These are shadows of things to come. These are the hand puppets of things that are to come that are going to be fulfilled, right? In the ages to come, that kingdom coming, right? Um, um, and yeah, and, and so what? don't let somebody tell you you've got to keep a Sabbath or that you don't, you're not doing, you're not eating the right meat. Or you're, I mean, that's still around today, even though we, can, we have these verses right here. See what I'm saying? That's why it's so important. I, I feel like we talk about this a lot. Um, and I can't stress enough how much to think about how special and how important and how unique it is to understand these things, right? And contrasting it with what the law, what's going on with the law, is so important. Hence, we have to talk about it all the time because it's so important. And every time you read it, you, you, you pick up another thing that's special. Okay? Um, all right, where are we going? Uh, Philippians, right? No, Ephesians. Ephesians. And this is where we kind of started the whole uh, developing this chart, right? Ephesians 2, verse, uh, I think, 15. We'll, we'll start verse 14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We went and figured out what that middle wall was, right? Remember, we, we studied that in the past. Have abolished it in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. I think about that word twain. I, I don't know. I was going over. I don't know why I was thinking about this, but I thought I'd just bring this up. Kind of. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but you go over a bridge, right? And a bridge is made of metal and concrete, and and it's got foundations and it's got multiple pieces of of concrete, right? And I realize in here we're twain. We're putting things together to make one. Um, but like, why not? Like, like if if we're why not? Why twain? Right? And we're, we're putting things together. But I also think of a bridge. And we, we have one new man so making peace. And we have Christ making our peace. Right? Have you ever seen the guys who go across the Grand Canyon and it's just like one little piece of rope? Right? A rope doesn't need anything else. It's the one thing that, but that connects it all the way across. It doesn't need this giant structure. Right? We have this, we have this uh, piece of rope that just, you can get all the way across the Grand Canyon. Now, would I ever do that in the Grand Canyon? No, it's not Christ. Um, but we have, we have one new man, okay? It's just kind of fun to think about those things. Why certain words are used, and I realize Twain there is also, we're, we're bringing together all these things. But anyways, I just say that as a fun little side note. Um, but here we're... we're we have abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments. Okay, there's something special going on here. Um, it, it, we, it's, it's been abolished. Okay, the shadow is just the outline of Jesus Christ that would come, and the kingdom to come. Right? This pointing, this pointing towards Christ is going to be fulfilling things in the future to come, um, and that's what he's going to be doing. Right, the kingdom. Um. And, and, and so here's a couple of verses so that you, you, we can understand that they don't, un, prior to Paul, prior to even understanding these things that we now know, they didn't even understand what the cross was happening, right? We know these verses. Uh, go over to Matthew, Matthew 16. Get Matthew 16 and grab Luke 18 on the way, Okay.
Matthew 16. And Luke 18. Um, Matthew 16, verse 21. Okay. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and to suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Be he tur- but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. They, like, they didn't understand this stuff, right? They had no idea. They don't know what's going on. Look at Luke... Uh, Luke 17, I think. No, Luke 18. That's right. Luke 18, verse... Why did I write down Luke 18? Yeah, there it is. I thought it was 1734, and that's what I'm looking at, but that doesn't make any sense. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I'm an idiot. All right, verse 34. Here we go. Uh, Let's read... uh, Let's read verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and they shall put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Right? Even the disciples, the ones right next to him, don't understand this stuff. Grab Ezekiel 28 and 1 Corinthians 2. Ezekiel 28. And 1 Corinthians Chapter 2. We have Ezekiel 28 talking about Satan here. Um, Verse 3. We're going to read the context here. Um, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Right? These, are, these are verses we can use to show people these things, Okay, how special this is. Um, Daniel, what was Daniel able to do? I mean, he was able to sh- yeah, interpret dreams that show what? The future of what's, the, what's going to happen. Here's Daniel. He can uncover secrets of things that even haven't, even ha- haven't even happened yet. Okay? And what, what is he saying? Hey, Satan, there's nothing I can hide from you. Right? And then we get to Second Corinthians or First Corinthians two, verse eight, which none of the princes of this world knew. For they for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. See what I'm saying? How secret and 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 special and how much you know, uh, like Ray always says, the comfort that we can have in this in this message. It's uh, it's so unique, and I, 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 to understand where we're coming from in the law is so important to understand where what it is that we have now. Okay, um, oh, we've already read those. We're gonna skip those because we gotta end here. We've already been there, um, but only Paul. Only through Paul do we understand how God was long-suffering sin until he would come to show us how he would take care of sin, right? So let's go back to Romans where we were, Romans 3. Verse 
Romans 3. We're going to read these verses here. So 19.20, we see what the law does, uh, what, what, what the understanding of the law was. And verse 21, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all. I had an incorrect understanding of this for many years, okay? And I, well, I blame myself. But coming from where I came from in the school that I went to, you know, things kind of stick in there that shouldn't, and you kind of got to shake them out. Um, but you kind of had this idea that, you know, Christ went on the cross, and he just knew everyone that was going to believe, so he paid for those people. And it's the like, I can't understand like, why I thought that way for so many years. And so, hey, so now I know. Um, but you read this, and it clearly says what? All. See, so if I said I was going to buy a Snickers for everyone currently living on, on the world, okay, and all you have to do is come get it, I would have to first what? Buy the Snickers. Right? I would have to have a Snickers for every single person. Man, Snickers are so good. <laughs> they're delicious. Oh, my gosh. They're the best one. There's no arguments to be had about which candy is the best. I know you all like disagree, maybe, but you're wrong. Um, so if I had a Snickers for each person, I'd have to buy them first. Right? But only the ones who come to get that Snickers can really claim it as their own, right? That's the gift. That's what God did on the cross. He paid for it all first. Everybody has their sins covered, but not if they don't come what? Get the Snickers, okay? Um, and he tells us how to do that. To them that believe, for what? There is no difference. There's no difference. We just went through all this in Romans. There's no difference between... Jew and Gentile, we're all what? We're all sinful. We're all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of the sin past. That's, what all that, that's, that's how He took care of everyone back there. Everyone back there got paid for because of this, right? Then And them, throughout their faith, is paying for them. Uh, that is, is putting it on, the, I call it the credit card, right? You swipe the credit card, pay it later. Um, they're putting it on the credit card, and Jesus Christ comes to pay for that credit card here, right? On the cross, to declare his righteousness for the, that they're in the past through the forbearance of God all the way through, right? And the silliness of us trying to, it's just so simple in this one verse, the silliness of, of Christianity that wants us to say, well, you got the gift, but now you got to work to keep it. Okay? So God only what? He, he, he paid in this, I mean, just in this verse right here. So he only paid up until one certain point, and then it's like, okay, you get that much, but now you got to do some good things based on the law, even though I just uh, took care of the law, it's out of the way. I mean, it's, it gets so confusing, right? And it's so simple, but I think that's part of the problem. People don't like simple stuff. Man likes to make things complicated. God likes to make things simple, okay? To declare his righteousness and for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him that which believeth in Jesus, okay? Um... So we have this, this, this access was by the nation of Israel, right? We see in Ephesians 2, um, feel free to turn there with me, Ephesians 2, where we started building this chart here, like, I don't know, four Sundays ago or three Sundays ago. Um, and we see, right, the access was by Israel, which that picture of Israel is really tiny, but uh, there it is. And uh, verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that is which is called circumcision in the flesh is made by hands. I mean, so first of all, there's a racial difference between the two of you, right? There's an actual, you're not part of the nation. Then 
Then verse 12, there's a religious difference, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and the strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So the access is a change. The physical wall is not in the way, um, and, and, and we didn't have, that was, that was in the way before. The Gentiles had uh, no word or hope from the God, right, right from God. They, they could see it through Israel, but that was it. We didn't have access and now there's this change. There's this change from law to grace. We just read that in Romans 3, right? Romans 3, uh, 20 to 25 there. And there's a, there's a change from the Israel to body of Christ. That's verse 14 and 15, which we read. And I'm kind of going quick because I don't have much time here. Um, and we read that earlier too. And there's a change in gospel. Okay, I turn one page over, well, at least in my Bible, to Ephesians 3, verse 6. And we know the context of this chapter here in this room. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the what? The gospel. Okay? There's, but there's this change in what the gospel is. Okay? Get, uh, get Romans 1 and grab Galatians on the way. Uh, Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, so we have this, we have this, the gospel here. And, and to my understanding, and what I have searched, I, I'm pretty sure in this statement, <laughs> that Paul's the only one who uses the gospel of, of Christ. Okay? And flip over to Galatians 1 here. There's a different gospel here. Uh, 1 verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace, or into the grace of Christ unto another what? Gospel. See, there's a change in what what the good news is, okay? Because now we can understand this difference from what the law was telling us and the faith that told us to do the, the law, right? And now we have faith that we're just going to rest on Him, that He did it all, right? We saw in Hebrews that I don't have to keep bringing the sacrifice because guess what? It didn't get rid of it, okay? Um, so we've, we've, we've gone through promise there, We've gone through law, and, and we're developing grace here. And we've been doing that in Ephesians 3. And Ephesians, in Ephesians 2 there, you're kind of using that. But the, the, the amazing uniqueness of this is that it's, it's grace, it's not law. We're not asked to do that anymore. It's, it's, it's now unity, not division. Right? There's, a, there's unity. We, we don't have those differences outlined in Ephesians 2, 11, and 12. And it's a mystery, not prophecy. Right? There's a, it's not the secret that was kept in God. Now the secret is made known. There's unsearchable things that you couldn't find before. And it's not prof, prophecy. And we're manifesting now the righteousness without the law. Okay? That's what's being made known. And now, you, now we know how to attain righteousness and now we can profit from all of the bible and what god is progressively being made known throughout as we go and we can uh, we can now learn all the lessons that it has to teach right see now the bible comes even becomes even more important to understand what it is that god has accomplished christ right i mean now we, we can see abraham as a great man of faith i mean his faith creates the seed line for jesus christ and um, you see him in Romans 4 with he's the righteousness without the law in the beginning, right? And Noah and his great faith, I mean, his faith, what did, what did Noah's faith do? He listened to God. He saved all of humanity, all of mankind, okay, from the entire world destruction because he listened to God, right? And we can learn from these great stories, 
And all that scripture back there is great stuff. Okay? And you can use it to highlight the specialness, I keep using that word, of what God has accomplished with all of it today. And, uh, and showing what he's been building throughout history to show us. Okay? And it shows you who is all wise and how he outsmarted Satan. I mean, Satan is not a, you know, like a, this big oaf walking around. And I'm just not going to listen to God. And he, he's, a smart, he's a smart cookie, right? Okay. And we got, you got to be aware of that. Okay. But now we have the message that what? It takes him down. Right. And, and that's because of God's wise plan. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is, I went way over. But I wanted to finish all those slides. But I hope, I, you know, I go through this stuff. I, I know we know this stuff, but I like looking into it and searching it and thinking about it. I urge you guys to also, you know, look into it and, and, and study it yourself. Because we there's conversations to be had out there, right? And you want to be up and standing and ready to talk about these things. We've all been in those positions where you're like, oh, man, where's that verse? I don't know where that verse is. And you're going to be in that position over and over. Don't get me wrong. But, um, it's, you know, the more you study, the better you are prepared and the better you can help somebody who, who, who needs and wants to learn this stuff because they're out there, right? So let's not, uh, let's, not, let's not not teach them for lack of readiness, all right? Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this message and the wonderful grace that you've made known to us and without the law, and we can just rest on you and your works on that cross and believe in that for our justification. And we just thank you in all these things. Amen.